Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I do a collaboration with Matthew Peach from Matt Peach Woodworks. Matt, if you don't know, is from Kentucky and he's an incredible, funny, talented designer who comes up with great, playful things. His viral videos are all over YouTube and Instagram. He comes up with some really fun, playful stuff. Always very innovative. Go check out Matt's channel right now and there will be a link to his version of this video during our collaboration we both filmed each side of what we were working on. Matt and I met at WorkbenchCon to start discussing this concept and February we were talking what could we do and he says I have this idea for this iris I've been playing around with these laser cut pieces that turn into this iris and so he brought it up with him and we were playing around and he came up with this more complicated version just before he showed up. And in this more complicated version, the gears are really the dominant feature as far as the design goes. And so we decided, let's take this design. And I believe Matt found this on the internet. I don't think he actually drew it himself. He found it in like an open source folder situation. And this is the impetus for something we're going to work on together. Matt said, I want to make this big. I want to make it big and in metal. Can we do that? And I said, of course. So we downloaded the files. I brought them into my software, my TorchMate software, and made all of them extra large. The problem that I was anticipating was that this metal is very thin, and having those gears mesh on this thin metal is definitely an issue. Making sure that these thin parts will stay aligned and not slide past one another was my biggest concern. And like anything, I said, the only way to find out is just to jump in and cut it and see what we're up against. If we have to go to a thicker steel, we'll go to the store and buy thicker steel. But this is what I had in the house, so I said, let's give it a start here and see where it goes. It's easy enough to cut out once your files are done. The hard part is getting the files. The easy part is doing this. And so that's what we did. We cut them out. We made this about 10 times larger than Matt's original prototype and the laser cut material. And we began putting it together. And in Matt's video, you'll see him and Patrick cleaning up all the metal. In my video, I just jump right in here. We got all the burrs off. We took some time and sanded everything off. But there you can see the comparison between the original parts from the prototype and the freshly cut metal. Now we need to develop pivots. So I'm cutting this one inch tubing is going to be our pivots. Everything's low profile now because we have three layers of steel. And this steel is only, I say, maybe uh, 14 gauge. It's thin. It's definitely thin. And just a little side note what this stuff is, and I don't even know if I ever told Matt, but yeah, you see it's starting to get some movement there, which is pretty cool. Um, once we start adding the layers, though, it, it creates the friction tremendously. And so we need to spray it with oil. So you see that we've got to cover that with oil. I'm using M1 from Starrett. Uh, this metal is from a buyout, a shop buyout, and it is all... A certain type of tool steel that Stanley framing squares were made out of. So it's very springy, it's brittle, it'll break if it bends too far. But it's I got about 10 sheets of it and a quick buyout from some junk collector. They're all 12 feet long by 32 inches wide and they were all meant to make framing squares out of in a Stanley factory from Massachusetts. So a little bit of side note. So Matt and I went over to the sawmill that's here in town and we picked up a bunch of fresh cut Mm, what the hell is the name of this wood? This is just some fresh cut local lumber. I can't remember the name of this wood. It'll come to me. And Matt was a little concerned that he wasn't able to do proper joinery and he was a little paranoid that people might pick on him for not doing proper joinery. And so what he decided to do is CA glue all the parts together and then screw it. And there's a lot of redundancy in the joinery here because once this goes together, then it gets held together again by another ring and then that ring gets held together by these legs and so ultimately there's a lot of redundancy here this table is going to live outside it is going to take a beating but that is okay because this is hemlock is the name of the wood i couldn't remember and so this wood will shrink and expand and shrink and expand it is a very plentiful local species a lot of the sawmills have this hemlock so matt laid out this pinwheel design this was his original idea and we cut a circle down the middle for the open trap of the iris, gate mouth and the iris. We had a, we've been kicking around several ideas while we were working on this. What is it going to be? Should the bottom be filled with glass marbles, with light showing through the marbles? Why would it open? If we had a, an electronics nerd, we'd have 
the iris open and up would rise a bottle of champagne or uh, if we had a sh another nerd around we could have somebody come up and engineer an Arduino thing where we open it up and up rises you know the flames or whatnot and we had lots of different ideas but we did not have time on our side Matt had to catch an airplane so we were jumping through hoops to get to just this part and I kept checking I was really proud that that worked and we kept checking it and checking it. <laughs> it was It's a lot of fun to play with, I'd be t totally honest. I made some brackets. In Matt's video, you could see more explicitly how this went in. We made the put the parts in the table, then laid the iris on top and welded the iris into place. And there it is. It works really smoothly. It's very, it's very, uh, it's very rewarding to play with. And now Matt decided to burn it. So I have this weed burner. Went and got the weed burner and he's just burning that wood and charring it it's it's definitely a popular thing these days which is funny when i was a little kid my dad used to burn everything to raise the grain so he would make a sign for somebody with some old english fonts and he would burn it to raise the grain so everything looked old now the the net result is you burn it to make it look burned which is funny because back in the day you burned it to make the grain raise and then you scrape off the burn and then you would varnish it so it would make it look like it was weather beaten and uh, it was Matt's idea to do these two tones, which looks really nice. And then we used some Halcyon from Total Boat. And we got some Halcyon on there. This is definitely going to weather once I leave it outside. And that's going to rust. There's no doubt about it. That's going to rust. We made some brackets to keep the tabletop attached to the frame. And Matt goes more in explicitly into this, the building of this frame when you go and watch his version of the video. And there's the Halcyon. We covered the whole thing with Halcyon. I tell everybody, anything you leave outside is going to get killed by the weather, no matter what you paint it with. It's just the way it is. Even cars get beat up by the weather in time. But that's just something to be expected. So I went on Amazon and uh, found this six-inch burner. And this little six-inch burner was probably 15, 20, 30 bucks, I forget. And that burner is a great little impetus for... We're calling this, I don't even know what Matt called this, I can't remember. Backyard fire table? Backyard crazy contraption fire table? What I'm doing here is I'm making an adjustable razor and lower for the burner because I didn't know exactly where I was going to feel comfortable. A crazy mechanical fire pit. That's what we decided to call it. The crazy mechanical fire pit. And this has a little keyway to turn the flame up and down and you'll see that's what I'm loosening now we install it in the side and then it comes with a little key like kind of like a skate key and that you use that to open and close it and in the end of the video I use a five gallon pail I don't know what the number is and maybe it's a 25 pounder I forget what the weight but it is a five gallon size propane tank liquid propane tank it's off to the side it is a little cumbersome but if Decided I wanted to put this in a setting that was wanted to look a little bit more upscale. I might get the smaller LP tanks and put it underneath the table. There might still be room for the bigger tank in there. So there you see. And that's the, the table. And I decided I went to Walmart and I got some lights. I got this rope lighting. I think I got this actually from Home Depot. This is about $35 rope light. It's meant to be outside. And here we go. This is the big test. I'm just outside the shop in the driveway. It's at nighttime. There's the lights, remote control lights. The lights work really well, actually. They're pretty. These lights come in. They're, they're somewhat janky in some cases, but these are somewhat of a high quality. They're meant to be outside on like along the sidewalk edge or something. So they're in a nice tight rope that puts off a lot of light. Now I'm turning on the key there. That opens up the gas. And then with a propane torch, I get that lit. Believe it or not, puts out a lot of heat. So if you're going to have some friends over and maybe roast some marshmallows or just talk around a fire, it does put off a lot of heat, surprisingly. You could sit, certainly sit around that and get warmed up. And I know with some time that heat will transfer to that steel ring. I don't think, though, it would ever be enough to burn the table. So I'm not worried about that at all. And there I'm feeling the heat coming off of that. And it certainly feels warm. And I'm probably going to set this up at the graveyard house in the back of the house once I get things more organized there. But it was wonderful working with Matt. It's great hanging out with people that have a different point of view than you. Matt is a very playful, very inventive designer. If you don't know him, you should go follow him. 
Matt has a few viral videos, and he has such an infectious style. Real sweet guy, and I'm happy we got a chance to meet. So, Matt, thank you for inspiring this project. And if you guys have any better names for this, call it out in the comments below. And go check out Matt's. There's a blooper reel at the end, which is really funny. Thank you very much, Matt. Patrick, thank you.